The combination of ability scores, race, class, and background defines your character's capabilities in the game and the personal details you create set your character apart from every other character. Even within your class and race, you have options to fine tune what your character can do. But this chapter is for players who, with the DM's permission, want to go a step further. This chapter defines two optional sets of rules for customizing your character, multi-classing and feats. Multi-classing lets you combine classes together, and feats are special options you can choose instead of increasing your ability scores as you gain levels. Your DM decides whether these options are available in a campaign. First, multi-classing. Multi-classing allows you to gain levels in multiple classes. Doing so lets you mix the abilities of those classes to realize a character concept that might not be reflected in one of the standard class options. With this rule, you have the option of gaining a level in a new class whenever you advance in level, instead of gaining a level in your current class. Your levels in all your classes are added together to determine your character level. For example, if you have three levels in Wizard and two in Fighter, you're a fifth level character. As you advance in levels, you might primarily remain a member of your original class with just a few levels in another class. Or you might change course entirely never looking back at the class you left behind. You might even start progressing in a third or fourth class. Compared to a single class character of the same level, you'll sacrifice some focus in exchange for versatility. Prerequisites. To qualify for a new class, you must meet the ability score prerequisites for both your current class and your new one as shown in the multi-classing prerequisites table. For example, a barbarian who decides to multi-class into the druid class must have both strength and wisdom scores of 13 or higher. Without the full training that a beginning character receives, you must be a quick study in your new class, having a natural aptitude that is reflected by higher than average ability scores. Experience points. The experience point cost to gain a level is always based on your total character level, as shown in the character advancement table in Chapter 1, not your level in a particular class. So, if you are a Cleric 6 Fighter 1, you must gain enough XP to reach 8th level before you can take your 2nd level as a Fighter or your 7th level as a Cleric. Hit points and hit dice. You gain the hit points from your new class as described for levels after first. You gain the first level hit points for a class only when you are a first level character. You add together the hit dice granted by all your classes to form your pool of hit dice. If the hit dice are the same die type, you can simply pool them together. For example, both the Fighter and the Paladin have a D10. So, if you are a Paladin 5, Fighter 5, you have 10 D10 hit dice. If your classes give you hit dice of different types, keep track of them separately. If you are a Paladin 5, Cleric 5, for example, you have 5 D10 hit dice and 5 D8 hit dice. Proficiency bonus. Your proficiency bonus is always based on your total character level 
as shown in the character advancement table in chapter 1, not your level in a particular class. For example, if you are a Fighter 3 Rogue 2, you have the proficiency bonus of a 5th level character, which is plus 3. Proficiencies. When you gain your first level in a class, other than your initial class, you gain only some of new classes starting proficiencies, as shown in the multi-classing proficiencies table. Class features. When you gain a new level in a class, you get its features for that level. You don't, however, receive the class's starting equipment, and a few features have additional rules when you're multi-classing. Channel Divinity, Extra Attack, Unarmored Defense, and Spellcasting. Channel Divinity. If you already have the Channel Divinity feature and gain a level in a class that also grants the feature, you gain the Channel Divinity effects granted by that class. But getting the feature again doesn't give you an additional use of it. You gain additional uses only when you reach a class level that explicitly grants them to you. For example, if you are a Cleric 6, Paladin 4, you can use Channel Divinity twice between rests because you are a high enough level in the Cleric class to have more uses. Whenever you use the feature, you can choose any of the Channel Divinity effects available to you from your two classes. Extra Attack If you gain the Extra Attack class feature from more than one class, the features don't add together. You can't make more than two attacks with this feature unless it says you do, as the Fighter's version of Extra Attack does. Similarly, the Warlock's Eldritch Invocation, Thirsting Blade, doesn't give you additional attacks if you also have extra attack. Unarmored Defense If you already have the Unarmored Defense feature, you can't gain it again from another class. Spellcasting Your capacity for spellcasting depends partly on your combined levels in all your spellcasting classes, and partly on your individual levels in those classes. Once you have the spellcasting feature from more than one class, use the rules below. If you multi-class but have the spellcasting feature from only one class, you follow the rules as described in that class. Spells Known and Prepared you determine what spells you know and can prepare for each class individually, as if you were a single class member of that class. If you are a Ranger 4, Wizard 3, for example, you know three first level Ranger spells based on your level in the Ranger class. As a third level Wizard, you know three Wizard cantrips, and your spellbook contains ten Wizard spells, two of which, the two you gained when you reached third level as a wizard, can be second level spells. If your intelligence is 16, you can prepare six wizard spells from your spellbook. Each spell you know and prepare is associated with one of your classes, and you use the spellcasting ability of that class when you cast the spell. Similarly, a spellcasting focus, such as a holy symbol, can be used only for the spells from the class associated with that focus. If a cantrip of yours increases in power at higher levels, the increase is based on your character level, not your level in a particular class. Spell Slots You determine your available spell slots by adding together all levels in your Bard, Cleric, Druid, Sorcerer, and wizard classes. Half your levels, round it down, in the paladin and ranger classes, and a third of your fighter or rogue levels, round it down, if you have the eldritch knight 
or the Arcane Trickster feature. Use this total to determine your spell slots by consulting the multi-class spellcaster table. If you have more than one spellcasting class, this table might give you spell slots of a level that is higher than the spells you know or can prepare. You can use those, shot, those slots, but only to cast your lower level spells. If a lower level spell that you cast, like Burning Hands, has an enhanced effect when cast using a higher level slot, you can use the enhanced effect even though you don't have any spells of that higher level. For example, if you are the aforementioned Ranger 4, Wizard 3, you count as a 5th level character when determining your spell slots. You have 4 first level slots, 3 second level slots, and 2 third level slots. However, you don't know any third level spells, nor do you know any second level ranger spells. You can use the spell slots of those levels to cast the spells you do know, and potentially enhance their effects. Pact Magic If you have both the spellcasting class feature and the Pact Magic class feature from the Warlock class, you can use the spell slots you gain from the Pact Magic feature to cast spells you know or have prepared from classes with the spellcasting cast feature. And you can use the spell slots you gain from the spellcasting class feature to cast warlock spells you know. Feats A feat represents a talent or an area of expertise that gives a character special capabilities. It embodies training, experience, and abilities beyond what a class provides. At certain levels, your class gives you the Ability Score Improvement feature. Using the optional feats rule, you can forego taking that feature to take a feat of your choice instead. You can take each feat only once unless the feat's description says otherwise. You must meet any prerequisite specified in a feat to take that feat. If you ever lose a feat's prerequisite, you can't use that feat until you regain the prerequisite. For example, the grappler feat requires you to have a strength of 13 or higher. If your strength is reduced below 13 somehow, perhaps by a withering curse, you can't benefit from the grappler feat until your strength is restored. Alert. Always on the lookout for danger, you gain the following benefits. You gain a plus five bonus to initiative. You can't be surprised while you were conscious. Other creatures don't gain advantage on attack rolls against you as a result of being unseen by you. Athlete You have undergone extensive physical training to gain the following benefits. Increase your strength or dexterity score by 1 to a maximum of 20. When you are prone, standing up uses only 5 feet of your movement. Climbing doesn't cost you extra movement. You can make a running long jump or a running high jump after moving only 5 feet on foot rather than 10. Actor Skilled at mimicry and dramatics, you gain the following benefits. Increase your charisma score by 1 to a maximum of 20. You have advantage on charisma and charisma for deception and performance checks when trying to pass yourself off as a different person. You can mimic the speech of another person or the sounds made by other creatures. You must have heard the person speaking or heard the creature make the sound for at least one minute. A successful wisdom insight check contested by your charisma deception check allows a listener to determine the effect is faked. Charger When you use your action to dash, 
You can use a bonus action to make one melee weapon attack or to shove a creature. If you move at least 10 feet in a straight line immediately before taking this bonus action, you either gain a plus 5 bonus to the attack's damage roll, if you chose to make a melee attack and hit, or push the target up to 10 feet away from you if you, cho if you chose to shove and you succeed. Crossbow Expert Thanks to extensive practice with the crossbow, you gain the following benefits. You ignore the loading property of crossbows with which you are proficient. Being within five feet of a hostile creature doesn't impose a disadvantage on your ranged attack rolls. When you use the attack action and attack with a one-handed weapon, you can use a bonus action to attack with a hand crossbow you are holding. Defensive Duelist Prerequisite Dexterity 13 or higher When you are wielding a finesse weapon with which you are proficient and another creature hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to add your proficiency bonus to your AC for that attack, potentially causing the attack to miss you. Dual Wielder You master fighting with two weapons, gaining the following benefits. You gain a 1 plus bonus to AC while you are wielding a separate melee weapon in each hand. You can use two weapon fighting even when the one-handed melee weapons you are wielding aren't light. You can draw or stow two one-handed weapons when you would normally be able to draw or stow only one. Dungeon Delver Alert to the hidden traps and secret doors found in many dungeons. You gain the following benefits. You have advantage on perception, and investigation checks made to detect the presence of secret doors. You have advantage on saving throws made to avoid or resist traps. You have resistance to the damage dealt by traps. You can search for traps while traveling at a normal pace instead of only at a slow pace. Durable. Hardy and resilient, you gain the following benefits. Increase your constitution score by one to a maximum of 20. When you roll a hit die to regain hit points, the minimum number of hit points you regain from the roll equals twice your constitution modifier, minimum of two. Elemental Adept Prerequisite The ability to cast at least one spell. When you gain this feat, choose one of the following damage types. Acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. Spells you cast ignore resistance to damage of the chosen type. In addition, when you roll damage for a spell you cast that deals damage of that type, you can treat any one on a damage die as a two. You can select this feat multiple times. Each time you do so, you must choose a different damage type. Grappler. Prerequisite. Strength 13 or higher. You've developed the skills necessary to hold your own in close quarters grappling. You gain the following benefits. You have advantage on attack rolls against a creature you are grappling. You can use your action to try to pin a creature grappled by you. To do so, make another grapple check. If you succeed, you and the creature are both restrained until the grapple ends. Great Weapon Master You've learned to put the weight of a weapon to your advantage, letting its momentum empower your strikes. You gain the following benefits. On your turn, when you score a critical hit with a melee weapon, or reduce a creature to zero hit points within one, you can make one melee weapon as attack bonus. Before you make a melee attack with a heavy weapon that you are proficient with, you can choose to take a negative 5 to the attack roll. If the attack hits, you add plus 10 to the attack's damage. Healer If you are an able physician, allowing you to mend wounds quickly and get your allies back in the fight, you gain the following benefits. When you use a healer's kit to stabilize a dying creature, 
that creature also gains one hit point. As an action, you can spend one use of a healer's kit to tend to a creature and restore 1d6 plus 4 hit points to it, plus additional hit points equal to the creature's maximum number of hit dice. The creature can't regain hit points from this feat again until it finishes a short or long rest. Heavily armored, prerequisite, proficiency with medium armor. You have trained to master the use of heavy armor, gaining the following benefits. Increase your strength score by one to a maximum of 20. You gain proficiency with heavy armor. Heavy armor master, prerequisite, proficiency with heavy armor. You can use your armor to deflect strikes that would kill others. You gain the following benefits. Increase your strength score by 1 to a maximum of 20. While you are wearing heavy armor, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage that you can take from non-magical weapons is reduced by 3. Inspiring Leader Prerequisite Charisma 13 or higher you can spend 10 minutes inspiring your companions, shoring up their resolve to fight. When you do so, choose up to six friendly creatures, which can include yourself, within 30 feet of you, who can see or hear you, and who can understand you. Each creature can gain temporary hit points equal to your level, plus your charisma modifier. A creature can't gain temporary hit points from this feat again until it has finished a short or long rest. Keen Mind You have a mind that can track time, direction, and detail with uncanny precision. You gain the following benefits. Increase your intelligence score by 1 to a maximum of 20. You always know which way is north. You always know the number of hours left before the next sunrise or sunset. You can accurately recall anything you have seen or heard within the past month. Lightly Armored You have trained to master the use of light armor, gaining the following benefits. Increase your strength or dexterity score by 1 to a maximum of 20. You gain proficiency with light armor. Linguist. You have studied languages and codes, gaining the following benefits. Increase your intelligence score by 1 to a maximum of 20. You learn three languages of your choice. You can ably create written ciphers. Others can't decipher a code you create unless you teach them. They succeed on an intelligence check, DC equal to your intelligence score plus your proficiency bonus, or they use magic to decipher it. Lucky. You have inexplicable luck that seems to kick in at just the right moment. You have three luck points. Whenever you make an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, you can spend one luck point to roll an additional d20. You can choose to spend one of your luck points after you roll the die but before the outcome is determined. You choose which of the d20s is used for the attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. You can also spend one luck point when an attack roll is made against you. Roll a d20, and then choose whether the attack uses the uh, attack's rolls or yours. If more than one creature spends a luck point to influence the outcome of a roll, the points cancel each other out. No additional dice are rolled. You regain your expended luck points when you finish a long rest. Mage Slayer You have practiced techniques useful in melee combat against spellcasters, gaining the following benefits. 
When a creature within five feet of you casts a spell, you can use your reaction to make a melee weapon attack against that creature. When you damage a creature that is concentrating on a spell, that creature has disadvantage on the saving throw it makes to maintain its concentration. You have advantage on saving throws against spells cast by creatures within five feet of you. Magic Initiate Choose a class, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard. You learn two cantrips of your choice from that class's spell list. In addition, choose one first level spell to learn from the same list. Using this feat, you can cast the spell once at lowest level. You must finish a long rest before you can cast it this way again. Your spell casting ability for those spells depends on the class you chose. Charisma for Bard, Sorcerer, or Warlock. Wisdom for Cleric or Druid, or Intelligence for Wizard. Martial Adept You have martial training that allows you to gain, I'm sorry, that allows you to perform special combat maneuvers. You gain the following benefits. You learn two maneuvers of your choice from among those available to the Battlemaster archetype in the fighter class. If a maneuver you use requires your target to make a saving throw to resist the maneuver's effect, the saving throw DC equals 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus your strength or dexterity modifier, your choice. You gain one superiority die, which is a D6. This die is added to any superiority dice you have from another source. This die is used to fuel your maneuvers. A superiority die is expended when you use it. You regain your expended superiority dice when you finish a short or long rest. Medium Armor Master Prerequisite Proficiency with Medium Armor You have practiced moving in medium armor to gain the following benefits. Wearing medium armor doesn't impose disadvantage on your dexterity stealth checks. When you wear medium armor, you can add three rather than two to your AC if you have a dexterity of 16 or higher. Mobile. You are exceptionally speedy and agile. You gain the following benefits. Your speed increases by 10 feet. When you use the dash action, difficult terrain doesn't cost you extra movement on that turn. When you make a melee attack against a creature, you don't provoke opportunity attacks from that creature for the rest of the turn, whether you hit it or not. Moderately Armored Prerequisite Proficiency with Light Armor You have trained to master the use of medium armor and shields, gaining the following benefits. Increase your strength or dexterity score by 1 to a maximum of 20. You gain proficiency with medium armor and shields. Mounted Combatant You are a dangerous foe to face while mounted. While you are mounted and aren't incapacitated, you gain the following benefits. You have advantage on melee attack rolls against any unmounted creature that is smaller than your mount. You can force an attack targeted at your mount to target you instead. If your mount is subjected to an effect that allows it to make a dexterity saving throw to take only half damage, it instead takes no damage if it succeeds on the saving throw, and only half damage if it fails. Observant Quick to notice details of your environment, you gain the following benefits. Increase your intelligence or wisdom score by 1 to a maximum of 20. If you can see a creature's mouth while it is speaking a language you understand, you can interpret what it's saying by reading its lips. You have a plus 5 bonus to your passive wisdom perception and passive intelligence investigation scores. Polearm Master You gain the following benefits. When you take the attack action and attack with only a glaive, halberd, or quarterstaff, you can use a bonus action to make a melee attack with the opposite end of the weapon. 
This attack uses the same ability modifier as the primary attack. The weapon's damage die for this attack is a d4, and it deals bludgeoning damage. While you are wielding a glaive, halberd, pike, or quarterstaff, other creatures provoke an opportunity attack from you when they enter the reach you have with that weapon. Resilient. Choose one ability score. You gain the following benefits. Increase the chosen ability score by one to a maximum of 20. You gain proficiency in saving throws using the chosen ability. Ritual Caster. Prerequisite. Intelligence or Wisdom 13 or higher. You have learned a number of spells that you can cast as rituals. These spells are written in a ritual book, which you must have in hand while casting one of them. When you choose this feat, you acquire a ritual book, holding two first level spells of your choice. Choose one of the following classes. Bard, Cleric, Druid, Sorcerer, Warlock, or Wizard. You must choose your spells from that class's spell list, and the spells you choose must have the ritual tag. The class you choose also determines your spellcasting ability for these spells. Charisma for Bard, Sorcerer or Warlock, Wisdom for Cleric or Druid, or Intelligence for Wizard. If you come across a spell in written form, such as a magical spell scroll or a wizard spellbook, you might be able to add it to your ritual book. The spell must be on the spell list for the class you choose. The spell's level can be no higher than half your level, rounded up, and it must have the ritual tag. The process of copying the spell into your ritual book takes two hours per level of the spell and costs 50 gold pieces per level. The cost represents material components you expand as you experiment with the spell to master it, as well as the fine inks you need to record it. Savage Attacker Once per turn, when you roll damage for a melee weapon attack, you can re-roll the weapon's damage dice and use either total. Sentinel You have mastered, techni you have mastered techniques to take advantage of every drop in an enemy's guard gaining the following benefits. When you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, the creature's speed becomes zero for the rest of the turn. Creatures provoke opportunity attacks from you even if they take disengage action before leaving your reach. When a creature within five feet of you makes an attack against a target other than you, and that target doesn't have this feat, you can use your reaction to make a melee weapon attack against the attacking creature. Sharpshooter. And this is the one that I personally use in my D&D group. You have mastered ranged weapons and can make shots that others find impossible. You gain the following benefits. Attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage on your ranged weapon attack rolls. Your ranged weapon attacks ignore half cover and three quarters cover. Before you make an attack with a ranged weapon that you are proficient with, you can choose to take a negative five penalty to the attack roll. If the attack hits, you add plus 10 to the attack's damage. Shield Master. You use shields not just for protection, but also for offense. You gain the following benefits while you are wielding a shield. If you take the attack action on your turn, you can use a bonus action to try to shove a creature within five feet of you with your shield. If you aren't incapacitated, you can add your shield's AC bonus to any dexterity saving throw you make against a spell or other harmful effect that targets only you. If you are subjected to an effect that allows you to make a dexterity saving throw to take only half damage, you can use your reaction to take no damage if you succeed on the saving throw, interposing your shield between yourself and the source of the effect. Skilled. You gain proficiency in any combination of three skills or tools of your choice. 
Skulker. Prerequisite. Dexterity 13 or higher. You are expert at slinking through shadows. You gain the following benefits. You can try to hide when you are lightly obscured from the creature from which you are hiding. When you are hidden from a creature and miss it with a ranged weapon attack, making the attack doesn't reveal your position. Dim light doesn't impose disadvantage on your perception checks relying on sight. Spell Sniper Prerequisite The ability to cast at least one spell You have learned techniques to enhance your attack with certain kinds of spells, gaining the following benefits. When you cast a spell that requires you to make an attack roll, the spell's range is doubled. Your ranged spell attacks ignore half cover and three quarters cover. You learn one cantrip that requires an attack roll. Choose the cantrip from the bard, cleric, druid, sorcerer, warlock, or wizard spell list. Your spell casting ability for this cantrip depends on the spell list you choose from. Charisma for bard, sorcerer, or warlock. Wisdom for cleric or druid, or intelligence for wizard. Tavern Brawler Accustomed to rough and tumble fighting, using whatever weapons happen to be at hand, you gain the following benefits. Increase your strength or constitution score by 1 to a maximum of 20. You are proficient with improvised weapons. Your unarmed strikes uses a d4 for damage. When you hit a creature with an unarmed strike or an improvised weapon on your turn, you can use a bonus action to attempt to grapple the target. Tough. Your hit point maximum increases by an amount equal to twice your level when you gain this feat. Whenever you gain a level thereafter, your hit point maximum increases by an additional two hit points. Warcaster Prerequisite The ability to cast at least one spell You have practiced casting spells in the midst of combat, learning techniques that grant you the following benefits. You have advantage on constitution saving throws that you make to maintain your concentration on a spell when you take damage. You can perform the somatic components of spells even when you have weapons or a shield in one or both hands. When a hostile creature's movement provokes an opportunity attack from you, you can use your reaction to cast a spell at that creature, rather than making an opportunity attack. The spell must have a casting time of one action, and must target only that creature. Weapon Master You have practiced extensively with a variety of weapons gain the following benefits. Increase your strength or dexterity score by 1 to a maximum of 20. You gain proficiency with four weapons of your choice. Each one must be a simple or martial weapon. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Quiet the Elk. I really hope you're enjoying this series of going through Dungeons and Dragons. If you are liking it, please leave me a comment below and tell me um, if you'd like me to keep going. Also, give me other ideas of something you'd like me to hear me read. I'm always looking for ideas, and something different, something unique. So, again, please leave me a comment below. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope this video was able to offer you a little bit of peace and relaxation in your busy day. And I'll see you all in the next video.